mountain lions are territorial animals by nature. Once they reach adolescence, their instinct is to find a territory to call their own. Dispersal helps maintain a healthy and diverse gene pool, but as human populations increase, available habitat declines. And for some mountain lions, this could mean the collapse of their population. At about one to two years old, it's time for young lions to leave their mother's territory in search of their own home. Mountain lions will then establish home ranges. Females tend to stay close to their mothers, while males usually travel much further away. This instinct is essential to the survival of the species. However, especially for young males, moving through unfamiliar territory is dangerous. The main driver for home range size in general in most wildlife is the density of resources available. So the more resources you have in a certain area, the smaller your home range can be. Lions know the area where they live like you know the back of your hand. They basically have a territory that they get to know extremely well. They travel that territory over and over again. They know who's living there, who's visiting temporarily and, and moving out. Lions mark their territory in order to let other animals know that this space has already been claimed. Unfortunately, not all areas in California are accessible or safe, An unfamiliar territory, encountering other males, or coming across human development are just a few risks these lions must face. One of the greatest threats to mountain lions in Southern California is the car. If these animals can't cross the freeway and maintain their populations, they're going to suffer in terms of decreasing population size, decreasing genetic diversity, increased risk of disease, and all of these things have the potential to wipe out a species, at least in a local area. In the last decade, the subpopulations in Southern California have struggled. To keep a healthy population, researchers determined that every one to two years at least one male must migrate in from another population and reproduce with the local lions. Based on combined survival rates and genetic studies, only a small percentage of migrating males have succeeded. Over the last 15 years in the Santa Ana Mountains, just one documented male has made it. Migrating to find another territory enables these animals to breed with new lions. However, when habitats are hard to reach and movement is restricted, inbreeding can occur. So when you have inbreeding in populations, you have mating between more genetically similar animals. And what this leads to is a reduction of the overall genetic diversity in that population. And when you have reductions in genetic diversity, you lose that raw material on which natural selection can act upon. The lack of connectivity has created a series of genetically distinct subgroups in Southern California. Genetic work recently conducted by Kyle Gustafson out of Holly Ernest Lab at the University of Wyoming showed that there are 10 mountain lion populations across the state of California. In contrast, many of the less urbanized and less developed states have a single population across the entire state. So we care about not only keeping these important members of the ecosystem in place in Southern California, but also using lessons from Southern California and these more threatened populations to inform conservation of other populations across the state of California. So we can use the genetics of the animals themselves by looking at the genetic information from their DNA, which provides sort of a fingerprint of that individual animal. And using this, we can determine animals that have migrated between different populations and look at movement across the landscapes that way. Mountain lions are naturally wide ranging and can survive in most areas. There's a lot of concern about what we call corridors and maintaining connectivity between these large patches of habitat, and that's important. We definitely need those big areas of federal land or private or state land where lions can survive. 
A major uh, focus of the Nature Conservancy's efforts in the Santa Ana Palomar linkage has actually been in ensuring that we have protected lands on either side of the highway. Making sure that our protected lands are connected is vitally important to the insurance of safe wildlife connectivity over the long term. There are very few crossing points across I-15. One of the corridors lies within the Santa Margarita Ecological Reserve, located in Temecula, California. We're kind of this last little bit that's undeveloped that is, is there for the animals to move back and forth between these two habitats. And the biggest problems we're having, especially in the last you know, 10 years as the cities of Murrieta and Temecula have exploded, uh, is literally having so many people so close to this corridor and wanting to interact within the corridor. This underpass, designed to help wildlife cross the freeway, is not being used as expected. We have people living underneath the freeway and we have people tagging and setting fires. The humans use that at the times that the animals want to use it. They use it, you know, late at night. It acts as an impediment for the animals. The animals don't want to interface with the, the humans. And if the humans are there when they're trying to get through, they can, you know, cut off that, that linkage. In Southern California, we have a limited time because the development pressures are so intense to conserve the habitats we need and to construct the wildlife crossings that are needed across these major highways to secure connectivity over the long term. In recent years, UC Davis Wildlife Health Center has partnered with highway agencies to improve safe migration for all wildlife. On the 241 toll road, which passes through the Santa Ana mountain range, a 12-foot fence was built along a six-mile stretch of highway. This fencing is designed to keep wildlife off the highway. And there's also jump out points and gaps in the fence so that if an animal does get on the highway, they can find their way off of it again. But the idea is that we're trying to use this fencing to funnel animals to safe crossing areas. Humans can also benefit from these wildlife safety corridors. The more animals that use them, the fewer vehicle collisions and potential injuries. Despite decades of conservation efforts from government agencies, development poses an increasing threat to wildlife interconnection. Only by respecting legally protected corridors can we sustain California's natural ecosystem. <laughs>